Hello, I'm Michael Morpurgo. I'm the author of Warhorse. And I'm here to introduce you to this. This is the app of Warhorse. My story is at the heart of this app. And to read the story, what you have to do is you'll see a scroll of pictures along the top here. And each of the pictures represents a chapter. So if I press on the first picture, up comes chapter one. My earliest memories are a confusion of hilly fields, and on it goes. Then, what's really lovely, is that because it's got amazing illustrations by François Place, who's one of the great illustrators uh, in France, you can, within the book itself, you will come across his illustrations. So, that's two, but the third, and most important by far, is that you can hear me reading it. There's an audiobook involved in this as well. So, you're quite a fighter, are you? said my owner, tightening the rope and smiling through gritted teeth. I like a fighter, but I'll break you one way or the other. We have um, a timeline, um, which is down the side of every page of the text. You can press the timeline, and what it does is this. It, it shows you what's going on in the rest of the world, and closer to home in Europe and at home, so that you have some sense of the context, the historical context, the social context um, in which the story is taking place. Because the story does cover four years, and it's, a, it, it's four years of turbulent history. And this is very useful because it, it gives the reader some sense of where this is uh, in history. Let me give you an example. Here we have the bell ringers of Iddesley uh, in Devon, in 1911 and it comes up just at the right moment because just at that point in the story uh, Albert rings the tenor bell in the village church and so you now you can see all the bells laid out and these extraordinary characters just in fact before the First World War it just widens if you like the appreciation of the story and the historical context when you when you write a, a book particularly a book set in historical times as this was, you had to do a great deal of research. Um, and what's wonderful with an app is that the reader can do the research at the same time as reading the book, which is an extraordinary thing to be able to do. And so I would press on the home page, I would press insights, and up comes, there's a picture of myself, but there's also a wonderful picture here of a man called Pete Chelans. And Pete Chelans runs a museum in Belgium called In Flanders Field. And he's standing there in a cemetery in northern France. And when he talks to us, he tells us about the trenches and about life in the trenches and about why the trenches were there, the protection the soldiers had from the machine gun fire and the shell fire. And we're talking about someone who's a, one of the world's great experts on the First World War. We are here at the Bayernwald, the Bavarian Wood, as the, as the German calls it, and uh, the uh, uh, trench system that you see here. Well, that should be enough, shouldn't it? But in fact, there's, there's, a, um, there's something else. Um, there's a performance of the story. This is my personal take, if you like, on my story. But I'm not alone, because I have these two wonderful singers, uh, John Tams and Barry Coop, on stage. And it's their music which, if you like, weaves its way through the story, giving it uh, atmosphere and pace uh, uh, and, and mood change as well. Um, John Tams is uh, the song maker on the uh, theatre show of Warhorse, uh, produced by the National Theatre. Um, and so the songs come from the show, but there are also others there. Fading away like the stars in Losing their light in the glorious sun. This particular uh, evening was put on in front of a live audience in London, especially for this app, and I wore a red jacket for the occasion.